In 2005, I started a company with two other business partners, my sister, uh, Terry Sita, and another classmate of mine, Benjamin House. We chose to start a business that embraced three base foundations um, of which we could then build our business from. The first is sustainability. And when we talk about sustainability, we talk about it in relation to how we make things, how we're embracing the materials that we take from the earth and make into the things that we use, and how we can do those and design systems around how we do that in order so that we can uh, develop a product that can live within the systems that we've created in a way that allows for us to continually, continuing to, to kind of take the systems, these cycles, and, and attach them to product and attach them to our, life, our lifestyles. The other things that we embrace are technology. We listen to te te technology in a way that technology is speaking to us, it's evolving. There are materials that allow for us to do different things than we ever thought imaginable. Um, take microchips, anything else. We've embraced technology in the way of renewable energies. And we've done that through design. And how we've done that is by taking the design process, an iterative process, and applying it to business, applying it to how we make things, um, and then how we embrace the rational and the emotional side of how, what an object can be and, and how we relate to it. So these are the foundation principles. And we use these foundation principles to serve people. And how we do that is we develop, manufacture, and sell different products to those people as SMIT which stands for Sustainably Minded Interactive Technology. Now, the three of us, Sam, Ben, and Sita, could not do this alone. When you start a company, it's a collaborative process. Um, the three of us collaborated, yet we didn't do that collaboration without anyone else. We had to talk to the rest of the world. Um, we were able to do this in a way that we, because we were in a, a space, the design incubator, that allowed for us to embrace these questions of how do we make objects sustainably, how do we embrace technology, and how do we use design to do so. Uh, we were then funded with a grant to do that through NCIA, and found that clients and manufacturers also believed the same foundations that we believed. Um, so how are things made today? We extract materials, we make them into objects, and then we use those objects. Um, we've seen it in other presentations today in terms of single-use plastics and bottles. Um, we've seen this effect. We understand this cycle. We are part of this cycle. Um, most often, designers really address the use. Um, you know, we take all of these different materials, we make them into stuff, and then we give it to you to use. Um, and typically, those things end up in a landfill. What we try and do in every decision-making process in our business is look for ways to have those materials not end up in that landfill or in the oceans, as we saw in a few other presentations. Um, so we really have sustainability come into every single decision-making process, from the conception of a product, the manufacturing of that product, to the system that we've designed in the business to distribute that product, be responsible for it in its use, and then also for its reclamation. Um, so we'd like to see the things that we use become the same materials that we can then use again. We design objects that can be disassembled so that they can be upgraded. We design materials that have a great longevity that then become a foundation that we can attach on to the new stuff that is constantly evolving, that technology that I talk, talked about before. Like I said, we are a renewable energy company. So when you were talking about technology, we were talking about photovoltaics or solar panels. Um, this is a graph of embodied energy of a photovoltaic or a solar panel compared to its output. Um, you see that 
a mono and polycrystalline solar panel is what you think of as a solar panel. It's the rectangles on top of buildings. It's uh, whenever you think of a solar array, you're probably looking at one of those. Um, all the way to organic, which is a very new technology, and it's a t technology that we use. Um, it's a material that is completely recyclable, contains no toxins, and uh, really uses the lowest carbon footprint in manufacturing. Um, so it's a very, very new technology, and it's one that we uh, have embraced in, in the products that we develop. So the technologies that we use are a thin film technology. We use this because of its use of material. It's very little material. Um, but we also have market drivers that, that inform the products that we make. Um, so now that you guys all have a picture of what a solar panel might look like, I'm going to show you something that we think of a solar panel. Um, this is a product called Solar Ivy that we are selling currently. And this is a product that is a modular system that allows for us to deploy photovoltaics in the urban realm um, on vertical spaces, on horizontal spaces, and allows for us to customize the product to an architect's need, um, but really to a building's need. Because a building, it, no two buildings are in the same location. Um, and no two buildings have a similar surrounding, so to speak. There may be different trees, different buildings around you. Uh, here in New York, you have brownstones next to skyscrapers, and each context is different. Um, we've designed Solar Ivy in such a way that we can have a number of customizable attributes. Um, here you see a high, fairly high density configuration of Solar Ivy where uh, we've tried to maximize the area of a, of a surface with as many photovoltaics as we can fit into that area. Um, we can customize that density to a, do a number of different things. Let's say there's a shadow there. We could lower its density. Let's say you want to see through a, a window or a, a, a curtain wall in an office building. You could lower the density, open up the, the leaves, and, and allow for a view through, um, as you would see here. Um, we also have the ability to take a single leaf, which is the module, as I spoke about before, a modular component. And right now, this is, this is the organic photovoltaic. Um, so each one of these is a, is a version of this. Um, this is a component that allows for upgradability. Um, the photovoltaic market is one that is advancing rapidly. And in order for our products to have the longest longevity possible, we have to design them in such a way that we can embrace the upgrades in technology while still being able to be responsible with the things that we've already put out there. So this is a completely recyclable leaf. Um, like I said, you can upgrade to the next version of technology, allowing you more power out of your system, um, a different aesthetic if you wish to have that. Um, or uh, you can go to a different color, as you see here. Um, the organic photovoltaics are a photovoltaic that have the possibility to be made in different colors, in different transparencies. So the aesthetic qualities that we can create across a building um, can have a very wide range. In, in this configuration, we have it on a residential building in upstate New York. And this is uh, a project where the client was looking for a very uh, kind of random pattern across the side of a building. Um, the next slide shows a commercial installation. Um, in this case, we have uh, more of a wave effect. And this is actually a building where um, one of the base structures of our system is a stainless steel mesh that's extremely robust and can span large, building, large surfaces. Um, so the, the mesh is actually working as a, a safety element, a balustrade, so that when you can walk on these walkways without falling through or, or having another uh, level of protection. Um, we're then able to attach solar ivy to that mesh and make the entire facade and surface of the building a power generation uh, station for the building. Um, in this configuration, um, like I said, we have different photovoltaics that we can specify. Um, the organics, and for this uh, install, 
would be around six kilowatts. Um, and they would cost around $18 per watt. Um, with another type of panel that we're going to be releasing in the next few months, which is a CIGS panel, um, which was on that graph closer to the higher production side, um, larger embodied energy, um, we would be actually be able to produce 15 kilowatts from the same system with a cost per watt of around $9. Um, the reason that we offer these two different options of photovoltaics, and actually three eventually, um, is that the market has pushed back. There are certain expectations in the marketplace of what, how much a photovoltaic should cost based on the, the panels that you saw before and um, some of the cost down structures that have been applied to those panels. Um, and we have had to listen to the market and offer this new kind of technology. The CIGS panels, unlike the organic, contain toxins and have a different lifespan and a different uh, disposal method. So while the organic has the, the ideal, um, there are other parts of it that have it not do as well in the marketplace. Um, the uh, efficiency of the panels are around 4 to 5% currently and have a lifespan of around five years. With the CIGS, we're talking about 15 to 20 years. It, it fits within the context of a building. Um, so these are some of the things that we've designed into Solar Avia, the, the ability to be versatile, and the ability to, to meet the different needs that every architect will have with any building. We also have the ability to pixelate and place Solar Ivy in ways that allow for us to create imagery and signage. Um, here we have two different logos. Uh, Pratt, which you know, um, and the Brooklyn Navy Yard, which is actually where our studio is located. Um, these are, as you can see, they're advertisements. They're, they're the ability to create different uh, imagery through just basic pixelation, um, but they also produce power. So let's say you had a, a billboard that you wanted to light, you could have the billboard be made of solar ivy and be lit by solar ivy. So like I said, the, it's a system of components. Um, so we have a way of attaching to any building type, which is the building interface. Um, so there are a number of uh, attachment schemes that we can uh, apply to any existing building and new construction. Um, then there is the stainless steel mesh, which is uh, extremely robust. It's a high tensile cable, um, can handle uh, quite a few loads, um, from ice loads to snow loads to wind loads. And then there's the photovoltaic system that we apply to that mesh um, that then creates solar IV as the entire product. Um, one of the other things that we're doing with Solar Ivy is that we have developed a software system that allows for us to quickly iterate on all of those customizable attributes, the type of photovoltaic that you use, the pixelation, the color of the base leaf, to meet the different needs of, of architects and the needs of a location of a building. Um, in the northern hemisphere, a photovoltaic wants to be on the southern face of a building, um, yet the facade of that building may be southwest, southeast, We've designed each one of these leaves to have the ability to change its angle and orientation based on that building's uh, geographic location, as well as, like I said, the, its surroundings. Um, we do this by developing a software um, that allows for us to quickly iterate on, again, those customizable attributes, but also go through an efficiency uh, workflow that allows for us to make sure that each one of those photovoltaics will produce as much power as it possibly can in that, uh, in that location. Thank you.